tonight, and again, Councillor Stephen Cole is substituted. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you back again. Thank you. Um, declarations of pecuniary interest. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I turn to number 5141 on Broadway. Uh, I will be participating because I was involved in the preventing uh, meetings between the offices and the development on the 106 agreement. Uh, 
Flute Store, what those have uh, in the cycle storage and also a lift, um, safe access. And fourth floor, two bed flat there, one of the flat here, one of the flat there. Um, some of the flats have external roof terraces, uh, for example, here, this one. What you can see here are actually solar panels proposed to be flat on, on top of the roof. So moving to the top floor, uh, two bed top floor flat there, with outdoor terraces here and here. And on the roof plan, these are the solar panels I referred to earlier. Um, the building itself takes the form of sort of a U shape here. Um, what it does provide a bit of um, an energy space in this section here. Uh, it also provides a little bit of relief to some of the windows here on the main office building. In terms of the elevations themselves, um, as I mentioned before, so the proposed scheme is here, everything on the right here. This is the existing office building next door. Um, as I said, facing, facing external brick is the main uh, material of the elevations. The render at top floor level, you see that white frame there, mainly glazing. Looking to the sides, um, so again here, facing brick with uh, bay windows projecting here. The top four flat, you see some of the render there and, and there. Um, in the background, this is the Navy office building. At the rear, you see uh, some external balconies uh, for each flat. On the sides of the balconies, there is a 1.7 meter high um, screen to avoid um, sideways moving towards other neighboring properties. This is, um, although it's uh, a fairly built up townhouse on the site, some, some soft landscape has been proposed, which our tree officer says will work, which is um, small, two trees to be part of the front, um, and some more soft landscaping around, around the site. Treated the site is limited for, for soft landscaping. Turning to picture, uh, site photographs. So this is the building here. New office building next door. In terms of the heights, the height of the building would come to about the same as where the glazing intrudes on this office building. So we can just from down the road, looking up. It's this side here. This will change um, in terms of material and appearance. From the other side, looking that way. Um, opposite side is, is this bunch of flats, uh, one story higher. So that's just a for context. Looking around the back of the site from the side, so that's the side elevation of the existing building. So the scheme is coming in, is coming in here, and there's a whole other building right beyond. And again, just a closer up view there. As part of the submission, um, the applicants have submitted uh, CGI images to help put it into context. So obviously this is existing at the moment and then proposed. So you'll see all the glazing to the front and back um, Some of them um, you see in closed design. And uh, you see facing brick here. This here would be um, building models here, and this is um, anticipated to be a stone, um, stone material. The materials are subject to condition, um, that's what we're looking for for that. And again, just on this view, just to help put it into context. Um, so members of you wrote in the officer report that the previous appeal decision. Um, that scheme um, was was this shown here. Um, the CGI is not very good, but <coughs> if you see down the middle, you see there's lots of grey cladding. Um, whilst the inspector found the design of this to be acceptable, um, the applicants in this current application before us acknowledge the concerns raised by the committee at the time of the application about the, the family and sort of uh, modern appearance. So um, during the course of this application we sought to amendments with them to remove that and have the external facing brick and the uh, So that's just to help put it into context there. Yeah, but I will bring this attention to the modification sheet. Um, we may want to see the summary of um, late, late, late objection received there. And also some also analysis um, of the impact on those um, 10 to 26 pumps and over there to be accepted as we can the court. Um, overall members, the proposal is considered to sit comfortably on the site, not cause harm to the camp of the area or the surrounding 
leading to your residence. The scheme has followed a previous scheme, which was dismissed at appeal, but only the lack of a signed Section 106 room to secure the affordable housing. The current proposal provides a better design with the loss of the great external plan, and the scheme also provides affordable housing on site, which has been subject to viability assessments. So the design of the current proposal has now seems to be improvement on the previous scheme and therefore recommended for approval. Thank you. Um, can I just take the um, modification with the uh, appeal decision? No, it wasn't, Jess, so apologies for that. It, that okay. it should be, but no. Can, can I just say, this document, which is among modifications, was not included in the original papers that we received. So I'm going to suggest we have um, five minutes to read the paper because you haven't had a chance to look at that. Is that okay? So we'll give you five minutes from now. Let's see if you can all find the paper.
Well, we are trying to accommodate the member who is um, wanting to put their, his view in this evening. Um, we just need a load of copies. So if you could just bear with us for a moment, we'll get you in touch as well. Members, uh, I hope you had all time to read the uh, appeal decision and politics in the uh, agenda that it should have been. Um, so, uh, the Chair's offer just to put a sort of brief summary of, of, of that in the case before you. Um, so, essentially, you'll see that the, um, so the committee, the original scheme was refused on this, essentially, design and, and character impact on the, on the street scene. Um, you'll see that the inspector um, considered that, but actually found it to be acceptable. Um, and you'll see that he dismissed it only at the time of this decision, only when it wasn't a sign of this decision with him. Um, so that was why it was, was dismissed. Um, in terms of this current scheme, the, the applicant did resubmit the exact same scheme as the appeal scheme. However, because of the members' concern for the uh, appeal scheme or for a few in terms of the great plan, um, we just seek amendments, and that's what we've done during this application to make it um, a better, better design. So, we actually, we get a better design than the appeal scheme, as there's more of the yeah, placing brick um, to, the, to the building. Because the planning was on, it was also supposed to be on the side here. Uh, apologies, on the side here um, of the building, part of it. Um, whereas now there's, there's none at all. So, um, I hope that's helped in terms of the brief sum of that, of that field position where we are now. Thank you. Short term, 
But this goes right against new planning law, the revised national planning policy framework, Chapter 12 design, which supersedes the inspector's comments. It calls on developments to be visually attractive. The inspector says, acceptable. Para 127 says development must function and add to the overall quality of the area, not just the short term. The NPPF Para 130 also says commission should be refused the development of poor design that fails to take opportunities available to improve the character and quality of an area. The design doesn't even fit in with the council's tall buildings paper, which the officer says is pertinent to this application. It is conditional. Tall buildings may be accepted if they have exceptional design and architectural quality. If this was exceptional quality architecture, would officers plan to mitigate render which stains and goes mouldy by, pro by proposing anti mold render? Would they mitigate clutter, toys, and storage in these intrusive, boxy, cheap glass balconies by proposing obscure glass screen? Is quality design smatterings of brick and cladding to have just two minutes walk away from our grade two listed theatre, the eighth largest in London, and on brand Wimbledon, this main thoroughfare? Why was the DRP not consulted? Has the applicant learned anything about quality from CIPD next door? It's modern, it's energy efficient, it looks fresh. 15 years on because of quality design materials and finish. So instead of admiring a standalone award winning architecture, CIPD's quality design is overpowered by shabby mishmash, flanked by substandard, short term, lazy modern models in checkered metal and now boxy glass and render. Thank you. I'm going to have to stop this now. Thank you. On uh, Sandeep Singh, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, there have been some comments that have been made so far on design, and I think the uh, planning officers have all already uh, reiterated the answers that we made from the appeal scheme so far. There are a couple of points that I don't think have picked up, uh, which have been put in some of the objections that, uh, that have actually been on the planning application. Uh, one of them had been the overlooking that is actually from the building onto the rear of the house of Parkinson Road. They are bay windows on the west elevation, but what needs to be pointed out is that the western face or face of the glass of that bay window that's facing Parkinson Road is an obscure glass, and the two sides are actually clear, therefore we have to mitigate that overlooking further. The windows are also more than 20 metres away from any of the windows off the houses on Parkinson Road, uh, but the obscure glass is pretty pure because of the position of the gardens as well. Uh, there has also been various comments uh, on the objections relating to traffic and transport and the impact of the building and parking that's going to actually have. But this is a high detail area, therefore, no car parking is in land planning policy for the council. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. Could I? Please speak with me. Sorry. <laughs> right. um, would it be possible to say something? I'm the planning consultant and I did put my name down. You did? Speak. You had a few minutes between you? Yes. 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 Okay. I don't know how many minutes we've got there. I think one minute. I'll give you one minute. <laughs> 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 it's just an equivalent amount of time to put out the agenda. Yeah. Um, I was actually for the committee two and a half years ago as an advocate of the scheme. Um, you can know, explained by the case officer uh, and scheme architect how the design of the scheme has been altered to address some of the concerns voiced in 2016. As perhaps important to this was the inspector's findings that proposed bulk, mass, height, and form of the proposed building was acceptable. Yes, there's been a new NPPF. Uh, introduced since the inspector in, ruled on the building. Um, that NPPF stresses that good design is it's good planning. Nothing fundamental has changed um, in that period of time. Um, we would still stand by the building as, as, as being a fundamentally decent, good, solid design. Um, 2016 inspector was obliged to dismiss the appeal on the basis that only the agreement was before him because of affordable housing. Um, as the report before you explains, after extensive negotiations with officers, an acceptable 106 agreement to be drafted. 
child to afford affordable flats, or in the event of an op key not being able to persuade them to take these flats, um, half a million pounds for Merton's affordable housing pot. Uh, with these issues resolved, I believe we have an acceptable scheme in playing terms, and sustainable features, a good bike and refuge storage, and meets the London plan in terms of space standards. I'm going to have to stop you now. Thank you. 
So essentially, it has to be subject to liability to see this application. Um, you can see the application has been in this a long time, um, just because there has been more to and fro between um, our independent partners, who says certain names, um, and our one six officer trying to agree uh, agree terms here in the situation. So, so that's 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 the outcome of that. That's why there is two deaths and proposed in the Council Member makes exactly that point here in the Senate units or a token of 500k, not six units, is agreed in the inspector's report. And, you know, I, I feel the same way about that as well. Um, we could introduce a callback mechanism should the profit on this building yield, um, the viability assessment is, is, is as, as it stands at the moment, but the situation could change, couldn't it? With the price of properties, I don't know. I mean, we could introduce a callback mechanism. At the moment, we're still not allowed to see the Barbados assessments, are we? We are. We are, okay. Um, I, can I just question whether there was a Barbados assessment originally when six units were proposed? And um, is, is it in effect that the developer is saying, well, it's taken so long that I want to cut two units out? Or are there arguments that the state of the market has changed? What's the rationale? Um, check, so um, it's a form of the really bar um, in the assessor, so um, uh, construction costs um, have gone up. Um, uh, my colleague Johnson. Something about the um, uh, general terms profit expected between near, near 20% rather than um, 15, 17.5, sorry. Um, but essentially, I, I, I don't go to hand if the original scheme did have probability assessment with it. Um, but what this, this scheme does before us, um, so it has to, be, has to be judged on this merits. And, um, and we have got to a stage now where four is, is what's been agreed, um, or the half million pound contribution that's gone on the back of um, a lot of the people, um, and there's, and, um, and that's, that's the situation we're in. Are there any other questions? No other questions? Uh, comments then, please. Comments or something, please. Thank you. I mean, let, let's come back to the evaluation of, of the units at 125,000 apiece for uh, a, a flat on the Broadway. Um, I, well, for, for, for the full report, I mean. oh. oh, yes, yes. No, no, I mean, what, so, compared with a, a market value of 350,000, 400,000, do. Um, I, mean, I just don't understand why we. we to uh, accept what seems to be a woefully inadequate payment in lieu of, of the uh, of the flats if the registered social animal can't be found. Chair. <coughs> um, the financial contribution which a developer will sometimes offer doesn't equate to simply five hundred thousand to compensate for for Dwellings on a scheme. The way in which housing is delivered um, is um, influenced to a certain extent by the grants which um, a housing association can secure. So it could be the housing association can bid so much for a scheme, and grants which you can apply for um, a scheme, and that will help it get over the line in terms of what the developer is saying those units would be worth on the open market. So it could be that the developer offers, I don't know, 1.3 million for, for, for four units, or to ask for that for, for four units. And the housing association is able to um, bring in grant funding for that. They can offer partly towards that and then the extra grant will go towards meeting the final cost of the building. 
sorry, the, the units. If a housing association um, worked in partnership with the council on something like this, the housing association might go to the developer and say, well, we can bid a million for these um, units. The developer says, well, no, you know, we want one and a half million for these units because we think they're worth 350,000 um, each, which, you know, uh, again, I'm probably sort of way wider than Mark in the room, but you can see the maths being to build up. So then with the grant, which the council can um, uh, put in place, it could then take the scheme over the line so that with the registered provider making a bid for the site, with any grant funding, because if you look at the long plan policy, it says the maximum that can be delivered with or without grant. So that, that 500,000 could be used to bridge the gap between what the housing association can pay and what the developer thinks is the reasonable market value for those units. So that's where uh, I think it's important not to look at that figure as 500,000 pounds to deliver four units. It's a pot, which is effectively a grant, which can then be used to help deliver the units. The only drawback, I'll say the only, a drawback with this is that if the developer, so if the housing association looks to secure um, funding as part of its bid uh, from uh, money from the mayor, it can't then ask the council also to help because the expression that's used is double dipping. So you can't dip into one pot to help with topping up your bid to get the four units and then dip into the council's So what I'll say is that the, the obviously the application's been with us a long time and as I said there's a lot of super priority on and then it says there and there is and this is what we've come to an agreement on. Um, so my, my advice would be to not not put the crawl back clause within there. Um, as as this is this is the advice as well, this is the, the figure that has come through from the process around um looked at one one or six as well. So so what is a tool back to the council for the combat region?
grey metal cladding on the sun's colour is white or grey, therefore we'll get dirty over time. Could you just respond to that, please? It's just that counts um it wasn't in the room when this happened. So. Um, so in terms of the well the cladding um, sorry, there is no more um cladding to the actual walls of the, of the building. Um, we do have some grey um, people claim here to the frameworks of the of the bathrooms. Um, the render for the building is at the top floor. Um, so yes. So we um, we looked into this, but we, we, we can't so we can't put a condition on um, to um, say no no storage of bicycles or, or things like that on on balconies. Um, what we have sought to do is try and get um, a form glazing that um, doesn't allow to see through um, the balcony. So if there is something stored there, um, it would have such a, a visual impact. But we have to look at what's reasonable in terms of conditions, and we can't condition that. Um, to, to say no storage of, of bicycles or other things on there. Um, it might stop people putting plants on there, but um, you know, plants on there is quite good. Um, can I just ask if there are any comments um, around the design? Because we haven't heard any questions around that. I'll okay. generally, okay, with the design aspects. Okay. So, Councilor Walker. Um, I'll give all my comments in one go. Um, and it does involve the design later. Um, I, I'm slightly worried that um, our aims for the borough as a whole is to have more mixed size, mixed use, mixed tenancy, mixed affordability housing, and we and it's probably not kind of direct just well not just for this application in that housing associations or providers are seemingly unwilling to take on a small number of units in their small development. Which, if that is the case across the board, means we can only provide affordable housing or social housing if you build great big blocks of all social housing, which is absolutely against the um, aims we have of mixed tenancy and mixed affordability in the same areas. Um, I think that's probably something for outside of this meeting. I think this application is not perfect. I'm not confident we'll get the social housing and affordable housing in it, um, and that might go. Um, and they'll pay the half a million pounds, which will hopefully use to, to, to get some uh, affordable housing elsewhere. On the design aspects, this application, as Councillor Ben Moe said, is not perfect. Um, but I don't think it's so, it's not probably not to the heights of um, award winning architecture of the building next door, but I don't think it's so bad as to want me to want to reject the application on, that, on those grounds, not at all. I think it will be a perfectly nice building providing some perfectly nice housing for people in the centre of Wimbledon where housing and the cost of and where housing is needed. So in order, if we don't get any affordable housing, 16 units of housing is a good thing, it's not perfect but it's good. The design of the building is not perfect but it's good. All of it I think is good enough to give approval to. Yes, uh, well, Inspector says, doesn't he, on the design, uh, it would both reinforce and promote local distinctiveness and relate appropriately to the architectural form and language of the street scene. Well, we don't have to agree with him, we do have to recognise that his work is probably law in, in these circumstances, so can't really argue with that. On the affordable housing issue, and I entirely understand Mr. Lewis's explanation that the um, the offer of affordable housing, housing then draws in grant funding to a you know, to, to register social level. Um, 
But there remains, as they are not then, a, a perverse incentive to the developer not to find a suitable landlord. And I, whatever we say about that, but I, I, it seems we can't argue the number of units because we have to accept the viability assessment. But I do feel strongly we should have a callback mechanism, I really do, to, to, to safeguard against the fact that we, we, you know, we just eventually pass the windfall of, of, of four units back to the developer to, to sell to his own. Um, I think 20% is a, a pretty handsome margin, and I don't really see why we should countenance more than that. So I would like to propose that there be a callback mechanism. Uh, thank you. Just a couple of points. Um, on the half a million pounds, on the half a million pounds, am I, I mean, uh, the way I'm looking at it, which I think was my understanding from what Councillor Southgate said, was it, the difference between what the developer will sell the flats for, the affordable, which would otherwise be affordable housing, will be more than half a million pounds, which is the only compensation they're having to pay. Um, so surely what they should have to pay is the difference between what they'll get for the affordable housing and what they'll sell on the open market. But I may just have misunderstood that. Um, secondly, the issue about the social housing providers not wanting to take on um, small um, pockets of flats, is that something that is an issue for this committee to understand better or some other committee for council? Um, and thirdly, um, I completely agree about the drawback. Chair, so the, for the final thousand, I was talking uh, a bit earlier, but the, that has come about of the, of the, the detail of the calculations and viability, and that's, that's the, what's come to be the, the agreed figure. Um, I don't know the exact detailing um, behind it in terms of the, uh, as you said, it's the equivalent of X, Y, and Z in terms of reviewing this, but, um, but that has been the, been the agreed figure. Uh, that's come back through the viability. Um, on the, the small number of units, yes, so we, we have seen um, evidence for this scheme and in some other schemes as well of um, uh, registered providers coming back to, um, to applicants and us um, um, saying that a lot of not interested in small uh, schemes which provide you know, sort of four, five, six units with a scheme like this. So um, it's, it's, it's an issue um, and obviously. Through banking, through banking meetings, you know, they could just come up and some scheme here. Yeah. Um, but it's something we you know, should discuss for our silence meeting. Um, the only other time I think that Council Member raised was around traffic, and I think you did cover the issue of traffic. This is permit free, isn't it? I mean, I, so the, um, the, the, the such high access to uh, transport council member, um, councillor, <laughs> it's not better, is it? Yeah. Nigel, sorry. It, it's such a high level of um, uh, transport available in that neck of the woods there, it would be permit free. So people moving into that block would not have access to control parking. They largely would be expecting to use public transport. And I think since literally they are across the road, I think that would be, that, that I think it's been covered when you weren't in the room. So I just want to make sure we've covered all the issues that you've raised in here. Do you feel we have covered everything? Okay, thank you. Right, on that basis then, um, I'd like to move to the vote. Um, the recommendation um, is subject to the 106. Freedom, but we're also asking for a condition to be added in here on a drawback mechanism. I think the general feel is that it's not 40%. These are high value uh, properties. Um, we feel it's feasible that, that, that these will be worth more than they currently will. That would be being uh, flagged up in the availability assessment. So uh, we're including that condition, please. Okay, and on that basis then, can we? Um, Move to the vote. Those in favour, please. So. This includes the callback mechanism. Thank you very much. 
Councillor Deeb is not voting because of his involvement with the 141 project. So the recommendations are agreed. We now move on to 35 Coombe Lane. Um, coupled with brick and ground floor and providing the base, 
uh, the effect would be to create a more satisfactory resolution to the overall design of the building and re would reduce, um, in the officer's judgment, a somewhat harsh step up from this building to Hurricane House. And you can see it's this area here where Hurricane House just goes up quite, uh, quite rapidly. So in a sense, it would, it would mask that, um, that quite um, awkward rise from there up to up to here. So it would be step from one level to another level to another, and then finally on to the um, development which lies above um, uh, Lake Trails. Uh, the proposed flats would exceed adopted floor space standards. Uh, the existing flats would retain balconies and terraces meeting London plan requirements. And the new flats would also meet London plan standards for external amenity space. Concerns were raised by neighbours, including those in the adjoining development, related to matters of overlooking, loss of privacy, and impact on security. The block that has just been completed, onto which the flats are proposed, along with the flatted development, which includes the Waitrose supermarket to the south and east, together create a high density development appropriate to a town centre. Both schemes were considered acceptable by the Council of Planning Applications Committee. The proximity of some of the windows in the application block to the terraces in the neighbouring block is such that there is some overlooking. Now, although this photograph doesn't show it particularly well, the photograph that I circulated does show how there are windows within the uh, block over which the flats are proposed um, in relatively close proximity to one of the terraced areas um, at the rear of the Hurricane uh, House. Um, however, the arrangement is not considered uncommon in compact town centre schemes. The um, proposals would replace um, a terrace from which the development can be seen um, with windows. So you'll see from um, uh, uh, the photograph that I've circulated and from um, uh, the photographs in front of you where the hands are At the moment, these windows can look down onto this terrace in the same way that these windows can look down onto the terrace or these windows being out on that balcony can look down onto um, that terrace or from there onto that terrace. And under the circumstances, given that what had been approved was a rooftop terrace here, officers considered simply by placing a flat in here with two bedroom windows isn't materially going to um, alter uh, that arrangement in terms of there being a degree of overlooking from this building towards um, this uh, terrace. The design of the proposals um, in the officer's judgment wouldn't compromise security. Uh, at the moment we have um, windows and decks next to um, um, uh, balconies with screens on the adjoining building. The proposal for this floor doesn't have a balcony, so you couldn't realistically step out from uh, the window to gain access to um, a neighbouring um, property. While overall the proposals will exceed um, the threshold um, after which affordable housing would normally be sought, the existing block of flats has been completed. And so the latest application, which is only for two units, does not trigger consideration against this policy. Officers are mindful of other schemes where developers have sought. Officers would wish to reassure members that they are seeking to break Section 106 agreements on schemes that have not only clauses re requiring review mechanisms for capturing any uplift in the value of the development in order to secure affordable housing, but also for reviews to take place where amended proposals are tabled for extra units as a standalone application within an agreed period following the development being carried out. I think in this respect, um, officers have seen this kind of scenario once before and beginning to factor this in to more robust Section 106 agreements. I'm afraid that's not a position we find ourselves in here. Finally, the potential to add pressure on parking will be mitigated by a permanent free of Section 106 undertaking. The application is recommended for approval of subject to conditions. I can call on Chris Dev Dillon, please. Yeah. Yeah, the, the main issue um, was the privacy and the overlooking, and 
some of those windows I think may not be two rooms, they may be in the hallway upstairs. Um, and it is previously onto the flat, and that picture of the uh, flat is actually the split by a house. Um, so privacy is an issue. The light restriction, the high risk going is that development already is blocking some light from there as well. So we are using some light at the moment. And there is a, a problem with security as well. Um, the additional floor will undermine security issue for the whole development. As the additional height can provide intruder access into Hurricane House and beyond into Trinity Place and provide the terrace of the floors. And also, I'm speaking for the um, Trinity Place Residents Association. Um, and the, the other point is. Um, According to the existing east and west elevations drawing and existing north and south elevation drawing, both dated 2008 or 2018, it shows that the current building is actually being built over the higher than the original approved building, and there was a red dotted line that the current building is, is actually above that, and we are sort of losing confidence in whether a developer is actually following the plans uh, and the design as it should be, as the previous ones were submitted, or adding extra height to them. And the application also, um, there's some confusion over one, section 106, and um, what financial contribution has the, is the developer making um, for, for the local community? Um, or is the additional floor purely providing financial benefit to the developer? And already the developer has increased the building height once since 2014, and we're just wondering how many how many times the height is going to be increased um, in the future. And parking is also an issue there. It's very difficult parking around there at the moment as it is, and it's just going to cause more problems with the parking. Oh, and one other point yeah. was there's an antennae um, that was not shown on the original planning, but one now has been installed on the existing roof, um, which is not along with the current community of the surroundings. And we don't know whether the, the developer has permission to have this, and what assurance can the developer provide to the planning committee that they would build in accordance to plan if, if this building does go ahead, um, because the rest of the buildings don't have antennae attached to the buildings. And I don't think it's shown on those pictures at the moment, but there is one. Ian Felgate, please. Good evening, I'm Ian Felgate from Brooks Architects. Objectors have stated that our drawing show that the existing building has not been built in accordance with its planning commission. This is not the case. The existing drawing is a reproduction of those approved under Minor Material Amendment Application 14 19 21, which included an increase in height of the building. The red lines shown on these drawings indicate the outline of the building approved under Application 04 27 19. The building has built, been built in accordance with Minor Material, material Amendment Approval 14 19 21. The residents of Spitfire and Hurricane House have expressed concern that one of their additional flats will overlook their terraces and compromise their privacy. The amenity spaces in Spitfire and Hurricane House are already overlooked by other dwellings in that development and those in the existing building on the site. Our proposal will result in two additional bedroom windows looking towards ter the terraces in question. These bedrooms will replace an existing communal roof terrace open to all the residents of the building and the situation will therefore be improved. The proposed additional floor is located from the north of Spitfire and Hurricane House and set back to the existing building line of Hurricane House. It will not make any material difference to the sunlight and daylight experienced by the dwellings in these buildings. Concerns have also been raised about the dwellings from compromising security of the adjacent buildings. The roof areas and terraces of the proposed flats can only be accessed from within the flats, and moving from one building to another would be very difficult. The existing building has achieved a secure by design goal meaning its perimeter and communal and flat entrance doors are considered to be secure by the police force, and the same principles will be extended to the new dwellings. 
This application has a number of key benefits. It provides two new flats with two bedrooms each and will help to meet the demand for housing. It is in a sustainable location within 220 metres of Rains Park Railway Station and there is a bus stop outside the site served by four routes. Proposed flats are generously sized and exceed the size is set out in the nationally described space standards. The additional floor will screen the remaining part of the blank flat wall of Hurricane House that is visible above the existing building and as a result improve the street scene. The additional floor has been carefully designed to complement its location and the flats will be subject to a car-free agreement and so not increase pressure on the surrounding roads. Thank you. Um, Chair, I'll just go over that point about security again. Um, currently, um, all the flats, so anyone who perhaps um, knows how to get into um, uh, any of the, uh, the flats here, would then um, be able to get up onto the, um, the terrace at the top of the, the building, whereas the proposals, the two flats, um, would remove an area where currently um, a lot more people um, could gather, and which I uh, would suggest um, could um, at least give the sense of compromising the security of uh, neighbouring occupiers in the amount of flats um, adjoining. Um, in terms of um, privacy, I've checked on the plans, and these are currently windows to habitable rooms. So these are windows to habitable rooms, and as I said, they can look down towards this area. And what's proposed are habitable rooms. So, my reading of the drawings is that these windows don't serve um, areas such as uh, cloakrooms um, or stairwells. Uh, on the point about the um, antenna which has been um, erected uh, on the roof, um, I would suggest for the purposes of determining this application um, uh, this evening, uh, that that's something that could be dealt with um, under. Uh, a separate um, uh, investigation, um, and that's um, something that should hold up the determination um, and the Sydney. In terms of the accuracy of the, uh, the drawings, um, the planning consultant has um, noted that um, under a process of endorsing um, minor amendments to schemes, um, modest changes have been endorsed. And if you look at the way in which the building um, marries up with its neighbour, you've almost got a, a seamless transition between the sills or the base of uh, the balconies um, on one building of this floor and those on the joint floor. And again, if you can actually take the heads of the windows around and then across to the um, seam above the waitress, again, you've got that, uh, that alignment. So uh, it, there has been a uh, slight um, development creeping in, in this instance. I would um, respectfully suggest to members that it's something which doesn't have a harmful impact on uh, street scene. In terms of development creep, um, uh, with putting um, extra um, flats um, on top, um, I'd simply say that each application has to be considered by its merits. Um, it may be frustrating to see a scene coming forward where you think that perhaps um, you, you've made a final decision um, on a um, but as I said, um, officers are noticing this has happened um, on more than one occasion and um, certainly I'm asking um, officers um, to look very carefully at the way in which Section 106s um, are structured so that small schemes for extra units um, like this um, are factored into um, any financial um, reviews in the future. I would, however, flag up and concur with the planning consultant by placing some extra units in this area, it does not what, what I would suggest is a rather awkward transition between this building and its neighbour. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, please. Do you have questions? Councillor Crowe. Sorry, I'm not This is really a question about the first planning application. Not Explained why I'm asking the question later on, but what was the affordable housing situation originally when the 14 units on four floors was proposed? I think our threshold was 15 units at the time. It was two units. 
2004. Uh, so what's happened is the application went in on the threshold of 15. It's taken several years to build. It's not in use, but an additional floor and two flats have been added on. Thank you. 
the top. So if you were to look at lightweight um, or light gray panels at the top and then add another floor onto that, you could begin to just upset the whole feel um, of uh, the building. So I think we have every opportunity to, um, to, uh, to deal with that if an application came before us. But this evening, it's simply, is this scheme acceptable? Um, a brief question and then we come back depending on the answer. When did the threshold change from 15 down to 10 in terms of affordable housing? Chair, sure, I think that was when our um, unitary development plan was superseded by the level development framework. Um, but I don't have both documents to hand, so I need to check. But do you have a year on when you think that probably will? Um, the local development framework was adopted in 2011, which was before the, um, yeah, there, were, there, were, there was a, a directive from the uh, Department for Community System Local Government saying we could no longer rely on certain policies in our unitary development plan after a certain point of time. I think that was a, I think that was in 2009. Okay, and um, the exact date is not that brilliant. Well, my question really is, and it probably doesn't pertain to this, it's rather, as you were saying, about shutting the stable door after the law was revolted, but when in 2010 and 2013 um, a commission was requested and granted to extend the time limits and have they could um, build the original 14, if our policy had changed and the threshold had come down to 10, and they still haven't built it, built it, and we're asking for a time extension on, on being able to build it, could we then have said, well, our threshold's changed, it's now 10, so now we need affordable housing. I understand we can't go on the two tonight, but then could we have? Chair, um, you'll see from the planning history that um, there was an application to extend the period during which the permission could be um, implemented. Following the financial crisis in 2008, the government introduced um, a um, subsection to the Planning Act which provided for developers to be able to prolong the life of planning permissions because they recognised that the market had pretty much fallen off a, a cliff and that lots of schemes had stalled. Um, we had um, uh, a very high profile example where the issue of delivering affordable um, uh, housing uh, was debated and the developer was um, uh, able at that stage to show that their scheme uh, was no longer viable to provide affordable housing and that was um, the um, major development to, to perform a brand new house now and colleagues, uh, colleagues would. So in this instance the whole purpose of having the ability to extend the time to implement permissions was simply to try and get the wheels of the um, uh, building business um, going again and to bring developments forward, not to use it as a mechanism to actually frustrate uh, the development from coming forward. So really, it's, it's against that, that backdrop that you have what seemed to be in 2018, and not why, why weren't you sort of harder at that time? Because the whole thing about extending the life of permissions was to try and get development happening. Any more questions? Comments? Okay, go on, Councillor Clare. I would just like to comment about the design and size of the massing. Would it be possible to bring up the photograph which shows um, the two-storey housing to the, to the right? There. Um, it does, this photograph doesn't really illustrate my point. You kind of have to use your imagination a bit. But the top of Hurricane House steps down to the existing four-storey building. And it steps down to the two-storey <coughs> terrace there. And when you can actually see it from the streets, the street scene, it is a nice kind of angular descent with two steps in it. But now if we increase 
by putting an extra fifth floor on to the building, I think actually what we will create is a very significant drop from a five-story building to the two storeys to the right. Now, all these design points are very subjective, and I entirely accept this to this, that you think it will look okay. I just would like to make a comment that I'm not really convinced it will look as good. And I can imagine when the original application went in in 2014, the argument was made very much along the line I just made it. They are equal distance drops in height. Any other comments? Um, I feel I'm going to repeat comments I made on the previous application, repeat comments that I made seemingly regularly at this committee. It's not perfect, but it's good. Merton needs more housing. If we, we, we can't solve all of Merton's housing needs by building lots of big blocks, if we have to solve Merton's housing needs by every month, passing two or sixteen new flats, two at a time if we have to, we need more housing in the borough. So, can I move that we um, go with the officer's, re officer's recommendation as stands and um, give our agreement to this development? Are there any other comments? Then we'll move to the vote. Can I see those in agreement, please? Those against? Not voting. The recommendation is to approve. We now move on to um, gender item okay. Eight which is planning appeals. These are the next two reports are just for us to vote. Is there any um, Any comments on the planning bills? Planning enforcement, again, another report to note. Any concerns or questions anyone wants to raise on the enforcement? Thank you. Thank you. I declare the meeting first. Thank you very much. Units, um, we're looking at this as a scheme in its entirety. That's legally quite reasonable to do um, that. And so you can then conduct the financial um, review. In this instance, we've got a scheme which isn't so much as in the federal arts um, substantially complete. It is complete. The, the, the building is complete. There is, a, there is a building that can be occupied with a roof terrace um, and stairs taking up to the roof terrace, so they, they pretty much completed the development. Under those circumstances, I would suggest that the council as local planning authority could find themselves in legally in quite a tangle if we were to try and push for a financial review on the back of bigger development. As I said, please be assured, officers are wising up to um, this development um, and creep, uh, as it might be called, um, and we have examples that we're working on at the moment where we're taking a much tougher line with um, uh, developers. We have schemes where um, mixed use development um, proposals where there's some on 70 square meters of office on the ground floor, which surprisingly takes the scheme just one unit below the threshold for affordable housing. Um, and uh, we're, we're pushing developers very hard on, on things like that, and we're, we're trying to be quite creative 
in the clauses that we attach to um, Section 106. But in this instance, I, I, would, I, I would say it would be trying to shut the gate back to the horses bolted. Uh, I think what's done is done. This is the development which has been completed, and I would ask members to consider just the scheme for two units. Uh, thank you, Chair. Is there a mechanism to prevent the developer adding another floor uh, in the future after at least two have been built? There is, there is in as much as a scheme would need to be brought back before um, planning committee, because I'm sure that um, we would receive objections and it would then be that the members give to decide whether or not that was appropriate or it could be if officers look to, to the scheme. And officers may judge the scheme to be um, inappropriate. As I've said in my um, presentation, I feel the proposal before members this evening actually creates a better balanced building. Buildings need to have feet, a body, and a head. And what you've got is a brick base, a rendered centre, and a light clad top to the building. Now again, if you work on that sort of anatomical analogy with a well-mannered, well-designed um, building, what you wouldn't want would be something to become out of proportion with another part. You wouldn't want, perhaps, a building that was two floors of brick, two floors of render, and then a city slipper of, 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 of padding at the top. So if you were to look at lightweight um, or light grey panels at the top and then add a the floor onto that, you could begin to just upset the whole feel um, of uh, the building. So I think you have every opportunity to, um, to, uh, to deal with that if an application can be forced. But this evening, it simply is this scheme acceptable. Any other questions? Councillor um, A brief question and then we come back depending on the answer. When did the threshold change from 15 down to 10 in terms of affordable housing? Chair, yeah, I think that's when our um, unitary development plan is superseded by the level development framework. Um, but I don't have both documents to hand, so I need to check. Do you have a year on when you think that probably was? Um, the local development framework was adopted in 2011, which was before the. Um, yeah, there, were, there, were, there was a directive from the uh, Department for the Uses and Local Government saying we could no longer rely on certain policies in our unitary development plan after a certain point of time. I think that was a. I think that might have been about 2009. Okay, and um, the exact date is not that really important. My question really is, and it probably doesn't pertain to this, it's rather, as you were saying, about shutting the stable door after the laws were bolted, but when in 2010 and 2013 um, a commission was requested and granted to extend the time limits and how they could um, build the original 14. If our policy had changed and the threshold had come down to 10 and they still haven't built it, built it and we're asking for a time extension on, on being able to build it, could we then have said, well, our threshold's changed, it's now 10, so now we need affordable housing. I understand we can't do it on the two tonight, but then could we have? Chair, um, you'll see from the planning history that um, there was an application to extend the period during which the permission could be um, implemented. Following the financial crisis in 2008, the government introduced um, a um, subsection to the Planning Act which provided for developers to be able to prolong the life of planning permissions because they recognised that the market had pretty much fallen off a, a cliff and that lots of schemes had stalled. Um, we had um, uh, a very high profile example where the issue of delivering affordable um, uh, uh, housing uh, was debated and the developer was um, uh, able at that stage to show that their scheme um, was no longer viable to provide affordable housing and that was um, the uh, major development at the former Brown House now, the obvious uh, 
colleagues would. So in this instance, the whole purpose of having the ability to extend the time to implement the missions was simply to try and get the wheels of the um, uh, building business um, going again and to bring developments forward, not to use it as a mechanism to actually frustrate uh, development from coming forward. So really, it's, it's against that, that backdrop that you have what seemed to be in 2018 and why weren't you sort of harder at that time? Because the whole thing about extending the life of permissions is to try and get development happening. Any more questions? Yeah, there's Comments? Okay, one, Councillor Crow. I would just like to comment about the design and size of the massing. Would it be possible to bring up the photograph which shows um, the two story housing to the, to the right there? Um, it does, this photograph doesn't really illustrate my point. You kind of have to use your imagination a bit. But the top of Hurricane House steps down to the existing four story building, and it steps down to the two story <coughs> terrace there. And when you actually see it from the streets, the street scene, it is a nice kind of angular descent with two steps in it. But now if we increase by putting an extra fifth floor on to the building, I think actually what we will create is a very significant drop from a five-story building to the two storeys to the right. Now, all these design points are very subjective, and I entirely accept, Mr. Lewis, that you think it will look okay. I'm just would like to make a comment that I'm not really convinced it will look as good. And I can imagine when the original application went in in 2014, the argument was made very much along the line I just made it that they are equal distance jobs in height. Um, I feel I'm going to repeat comments I made on the previous application, repeat comments that I made seemingly regularly at this committee. It's not perfect, but it's good. Merton needs more housing. If we, we, we can't solve all of Merton's housing needs by building lots of big blocks. If we have to solve Merton's housing needs by every month, passing two or 16 new flats, two at a time if we have to, we need more housing in the borough. So, can I move that we um, go with the officer's, re officer's recommendation as stands and um, give our agreement to this development? Are there any other comments? Then we'll move to the vote. Can I see those in agreement, please? Those against? Not voting. The recommendation is to approve. We now move on to um, agenda item okay. eight, which is planning appeals. These are the next two reports are just for us to vote. Is there any um, any comments on the planning appeals? Planning enforcement, again, another report to vote. Any concerns or questions anyone wants to raise on the enforcement? Thank you. I declare the meeting first.